Weapon system ready. Allow fire. Discharge great fortune. Salvo complete. Missile broached. As it breaks out of the water, the Tomahawk starts an amazing transformation. Four fins grow from its tail, and an air scoop drops down in front of them. A pair of wings flip out like switchblades. The missile jettisons the booster and speeds away at 880 kilometers per hour. Within seconds, the Tomahawk has mutated from a rocket into an aircraft. Which is just how the cruise missile started out. In World War I, artillery was the weapon of choice, but the furthest a gun could shoot was 30 kilometers. Aeroplanes could reach deeper into enemy territory, but they had one weakness. With no accurate bombsight, early planes had to fly so low they became targets for enemy guns. In 1917, a crack team of engineers gathered in Dayton, Ohio, to tackle this problem. Their vision was an aerial torpedo, an aircraft with the pilot removed and a bomb in his place. Inventing genius Charles Kettering would lead the team. Elmer Sperry would build the navigation system. And Orville Wright would design the airframe the very man who'd put humans in aeroplanes would now be taking them out again. The result, the Liberty Eagle, quickly nicknamed Kettering Bug. It was a cheap and disposable aircraft, assembled out of a box in four minutes using only a screwdriver and a wrench. But hidden inside was 80 kilos of high explosive. It's quaint looking, but this quaintness is also tied to a bomb that will kill. So it's technology that looks cute. It looks like a toy. They call it the Kettering Bug, which is a cute name. But in reality, it's a weapon of war designed to destroy an enemy's capacity to fight. The plan is to send hundreds of these things, maybe thousands of them, for very specific targets that are deep behind enemy lines that are far beyond what artillery can reach and are too dangerous for a pilot to take his bomber or his fighter back in that area. The first flight tests were a series of comical errors. But then, after weeks of crashes, the Kettering Bug became the world's first cruise missile in 1918. People had been flying for only 15 years and here was an aircraft that flew without a pilot. It had an autopilot, invented by mechanical genius Elmer Sperry. The heart of his machine was a gyroscope, a fast spinning disc that stayed stable even while the aircraft was in motion. Connected to the steering with pneumatic pipes, the gyro was supposed to make the bug fly in a straight line. That was the theory. Mike Francis is a world champion model glider pilot. He builds his own high-performance gliders out of carbon fiber and launches them 300 meters in the air with a rocket motor. His flying skills are superb. Mike will put one of his gliders at the mercy of an autopilot. 
He's modified the aircraft with electronic gyros to see if they can keep it straight. The gyro will actually move the surfaces in response to any movement in the, in the model automatically. I'm now rolling the model and you can see the ailerons moving up and down. If I move the model in pitch, you can see the elevator going at the back. I'm not moving the sticks. It's, <laughs> it's scary, actually. <laughs> when I'm flying it, I have to look at the model, see it move, then move the stick. The gyro does that for me, far quicker, far quicker than I can. With the gyros in place, Mike should be able to launch his glider and let go of the remote. I'm just about to turn the gyro on it. Now. Again, you see the model switching. At first, the gyros do well. They keep the model steady. You can hear the servos. But soon, the wind pushes too hard. After 10 seconds on the gyros, the glider rides out and comes dangerously close to crashing. Mike has to intervene or risk losing his precious model. I'm back in control then. The gyro simply knows what position it's in. It doesn't know where it is in space. Consequently, the model might be flying straight into a tree. The gyros haven't got a clue that the tree's actually there. I do because I can see it. All the gyros can possibly do is keep the model straight and level. Gyroscopes have one big problem. They drift over time. The gyros in the Kettering Bug were no exception. They had trouble keeping it on course. They brought dignitaries from Washington, D.C. to Dayton, Ohio to show it off. And it takes off, but it keeps flying. And instead of flying straight for about a mile and a half like they wanted it to fly, it ends up veering off and starts flying around toward the city of Dayton. Well, this is a top secret weapon. They don't want anybody to know about it, so they all jump in their cars and they start chasing after this thing as it's buzzing along at 50 miles an hour, which trying to chase down country roads around Dayton in 1917 must have been very interesting. It finally goes out and it runs out of gas and it crashes into a farmer's field. And the farmer comes out, oh, an airplane just crashed out here, but I can't find the pilot. Well, to maintain the secret, they grabbed some flying, a flying suit from the back of one of the cars and said, well, here's the pilot. He jumped out with a parachute. Well, they didn't have parachutes for airplanes at that time. But the farmer believed him, and they kept the secret. Building the Kettering Bug had taught missile designers valuable lessons. But in the end, the grandfather of the Tomahawk never saw battle. <laughs> 